How are you there, YouTube? Um, hope you're all well. Uh, this is one of my own, and I got an email recently from somebody asking me about it. Uh, did I still have it? And blah de blah de blah. So, just clean it, trying to clean it. It's manky, even though I keep it in the house. But uh, this is what I call a 148 FGTL hybrid. Uh, I christened it at the time the Super Snake. Originally, um, on the 23rd of this month, I think it is, um, I'll have this 12 years. And originally, this came as like a bog standard front 148 GTL. It's 1978, year one. Uh, and I got it from Tim at Snake Radio Customs in Arizona. And he went through it, recapped it, done all his mods to it, uh, and I used it for quite a long time. So then, after a period of time, um, I got this one, and a friend of mine, Andrew, Andrew uh, McIntyre, he had got one around the same time, uh, same job, it was 148 GTL, so we did, like Tim was doing these 148 GTL hybrids, and we decided uh, we wanted to go down that road, so... We, uh, uh, well, uh, the deal was that if I'd done the job on Andrews, I got, he, he'd, he'd cover the parts that it would take to do mine. Now, originally, this had the Farmer Fail board, as I call it, Farmer Dave mod board in it, and um, it didn't last too long. Uh, and around the time of this conversion, uh, just before it, uh, the, the, the board failed. So, hence the name Farmer Fail. But uh, he didn't want to know anything about it. He said it was, oh, you put it in wrong and all this carry on. But look at it. So what we done was we got all the bits, uh, inner panel, brand new bezels, uh, counter modules, uh, counter board, uh, switch panel board, and whatever other bits and pieces you need to, to do this job. And uh, I converted the two of them at the same time. Andrews was done in, in pure green. And mine was done in uh, in blue, as I love the blue. So I'm just going to whip the cover off it here now. And um, we can have a look inside. And uh, I'll show you then uh, in the finish. I I'll turn it on and show you some of the stuff it does. Uh, although there's not a whole pile going on today on the air. And um, we'll, we'll have a look around anyway and see what the story is. So... Uh, just bear with me for a minute and I'll pop the lid off and show you what's going on inside. So, there's the inside. There's that much going on in there. There's not even room for a speaker, but that doesn't bother me because I seldom use internal speakers. So we have, um, that's the frequency counter module. Then this is the Lescom board, LC6404. And... Uh, we kept all the wiring as neat as I could, but um, there's just it's a busy radio. There's a lot going on inside it, so but it does all sorts of cool stuff, so we don't mind. Anyway, we'll uh, carry on now and put the lid back on, and uh, I just want to clean the rotary controls actually while I have that open, so I'll. Uh, I'll do that, and then I'll put the lid back on, and I'll uh, I'll put it on the on the stand there to show you all the features. Right, so uh, we have her back together there now. I uh, give it a bit of a clean as well, and uh, we we'll turn it on. This is on three eight five. We'll go up to. It's very handy. This uh, you've your six buttons here, so you can go up ten channels or down ten channels. You can go up uh, a band at a time, which is like 50 channels or something like that, I think it does. And you can go back down. Goes well up into 10 meters. So we'll put it back on 55, which is the triple five. It also has this home switch thing on the side. You can set a channel in it. I have it set in the triple five, so... 
Uh, once you flip that switch up, it will, no matter where you are on the radio, it'll bring you back there. Uh, I can't demonstrate it at the moment because I broke the switch. <laughs> I broke the switch a few years ago and I just never bothered fixing it because, to be honest, it wasn't really something I used. Um, now, it also has a squelch scan. So I turn up the squelch there. It'll start scanning through the channels. If it hears anything, it will stop, obviously, when the squelch threshold is broken it'll wait then for a few seconds and off it goes again uh, it'll also scan and I maybe I need to stop that ah yeah these are latching I forgot so it'll scan down the way as well so that's that um then we have let's see Okay, so it starts there, uh, minus 15, so that's 15 channels under the low mid-band, um, and it starts there, 26815, and on the first 40 channels, the way he has this done, uh, you see there C, that's like CB band, that's the way he denotes it, uh, the alphas are shown there, denoted by an A. So you get the idea, but it goes all the way from there, uh, 815 up to channel 172, which is 28725. I've used this radio quite a bit on 10 meters, and um, you know when you tell lads, when I tell them what I'm using, <laughs> they just, uh, they be a little bit gobsmacked because the audio out of this thing is absolutely unbelievable. Even with just a stock microphone, it's um, it's very, very good. So, what else did I do to it? I changed the TX light. I don't know, I just got on a few channels there, so no one's listening to me. Uh, that's now 1, 2, 3, 4. Hello, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The modulation light that works on all the modes. Normally... Um, Normally on radios to have modulation light, it only works on AM. But that one works on AM as well. One, two, three, four. So you have the carrier there and then the, the audio imposed onto it when you when you transmit. Lower side band it also works. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Uh don't mind the way you see that kind of flick in there. That's just the uh the the, the display multiplexing. If I played around with the shutter speed, let's see. There you are. So it's it's not doing it now. Once I change the shutter speed. You see if it lowers the shutter speed there, the whole thing goes bloody bananas. <laughs> anyway. Um we we'll leave it there. You see, they're both uh, multiplexing at different frequencies, so you have to go above it to, to stop it happening. You can still kind of see this kind of uh, wavering on the camera, but in real life, in reality, you don't see that at all. Um, so it has the squelch, as I showed. Uh, you have this display mode thing. Bit of a gimmick, really. You can hide the, the channel number that you're on. Uh, you can have it as kind of different denotions of it just goes from one to whatever uh, rather than when you have it this way uh, the u means upper channel so that's from 27.405 up um, to 27.995 I think it is and then you go into 10 meters so it just registers 100 then from 100 to 172 so all the way to 28.725 uh, what else do you have there? 75. Uh, the idea of this is if you don't have uh, a frequency counter on your radio, you can have this mode. So if I put it on 555, it's easier to... The idea is 27.55 and the end will be 0. So, uh, or 5, sorry. 
So you, you kind of know where you are in the radio, even if you don't have a counter. Uh, and then you have this uh, ABCD job, like uh, uh, an export radio. See, so it's gone to E, F, and then it's gone to B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, so it starts at B, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six bands of, uh, what you call it? I think it's 50 channels or something like that. So that'd be, it's kind of the way he has it done. Um, because see there it says D15. Like on a normal export radio that we'd be used to uh, D, it'd be channel 12. So I think he's counting in the, the alpha channel. So that's why, so I see 14, that's an alpha channel. On a normal radio, that wouldn't be there. You'd have 535 and then you'd go straight to 555. It's because of the way the, the PLLs were requested to work by the uh, um, FCC at the time. Because a lot of the remote control stuff toy cars and planes and things like that they used those alpha channels for control back then and uh, that's the reason why uh, you have these alpha channels so you have i always leave it on this one and uh what else uh what did i do to it at the time i put a jewel pot on it here for the uh clarifier this is um a course and fine but the fine also works on transmit so yeah, I think it's a half KC either way that'll bring you. It doesn't even register on the counter, it's that small. Uh, maybe less than half KC. And this one then, uh, you have your slide of uh, six up and six down. So that works grand. And then what I done here was uh, the RF gain and SWR cal. I doubled that up. That's the way that, or actually I didn't. That's the way that should be. Volume and squelch, dual control as well, that's the way it should be. And then I put in this one here, dual control, so um, I have uh, variable AM power um, for running an amplifier on the Super Bowl or whatever. And then my mic gain is on the outside. Um, the receive on this thing is just so quiet. And he has this little thing done, I don't know if you can hear it. But uh, he's a switch on the back. Well, it used to be on the front, but I put it on the back. I think it switches out the filter or something like that. And it just makes the receive so much smoother to listen to. Hopefully you'll hear it now on the camera, so we'll have a listen. That's the way it should be. And then I'll flip the switch. It's just so much nicer to listen to. And you'd be sitting there with it like that. And the next thing, some big massive station would come in and it would actually frighten you. He'd be that loud. Um, super, super radio. And uh, I don't, I'll don't. i never part with this. For a start, there's too much money tied up in it. There's around $1,000 in this radio. Uh, between getting Tim to do it the first time and then all the modifications that was done after. And that that's not even taking into account my time for doing it. Um... This was around the period I was kind of really getting into doing the custom stuff. And uh, it came out came out very well. Very fond of this radio. <clears throat> I keep this upstairs in my office. Uh, where my other ham radio room is. And um, I, I have the ability, the way I have it done. I can switch between the house and the shed for the IMAX on the roof. So... We often use this guy on 10 meters when it's open. I like 10 meters, it's nice and quiet. Uh, not the zoo that 11 can be. But there you have it. So that is the 14A FGTL hybrid. The super snake as I call it. Yes, I still have it. No, I won't sell it. Uh, it could do it a decent set of cases. Um, if I remember right, I took the cases off it. There was good cases on it, and someone sent a one for eight GTL here, and uh, <clears throat> I just took the cases off it to. I took the cases off it to um, put on their radio because they they wanted uh, they wanted new cases, and I didn't have any, so I just whipped them off this. 
So uh, there you go. So that's it. Still have it, not for sale, and uh, I still love it. All this time, all this time later, it's one of the the best radios I've ever had for for uh, eleven and ten meters. I think that knob's off of President Veep. Used to get a lot of questions at the time. What was the knob off? Channel knob. And the thing I like about your man's conversion, uh, Lescom, his, it uses the standard channel switch. So it's not an encoder, like it's just the, the standard channel switch. And if Tim sees this now, he'd be giving out because he's been telling me for years to remove that capacitor to stop the muting between channels, but I'm not that bothered by it, so. Um. There you have it. So, right, I'll leave it there, rambling now, start to repeat myself. So, uh, we'll get you again in the next video. And 73s to you all.